the turnstone. This bird, which, in its full vernal dress, is one of the most beautiful of its family, is found along the southern coast of the United States during winter, from North Carolina to the mouth of the Sabine River. I was delighted to see the ingenuity by which they turned over the oyster shells, clods of mud, and other small bodies left exposed by the retiring tide. Whenever the object was not too large, the bird bent its legs to half their length, placed its bill beneath it, and with a sudden quick jerk of the head pushed it off, when it quickly picked up the food which was thus exposed to view, and walked deliberately to the next shell to perform the same operation. The American Flamingo. On the 7th of May, 1832, while sailing from Indian Key, one of the numerous islets that skirt the southeastern coast of the peninsula of Florida, I, for the first time, saw a flock of flamingos. It was on the afternoon of one of those sultry days which, in that portion of the country, exhibit towards the evening the most glorious effulgence that can be conceived. The sun, now far advanced towards the horizon, still shone with full splendor. The ocean around glittered in its quiet beauty, and the light fleecy clouds that here and there spotted the heavens seemed flakes of snow margined with gold. Our bark was propelled almost as if by magic, for scarcely was a ripple raised by her bows as we moved in silence. Far away to seaward we spied a flock of flamingos advancing, in Indian line, with well-spread wings, outstretched necks, and long legs directed backwards. The Barred Owl Should you, kind reader, visit the noble forests of the lower parts of the states of Louisiana about the middle of October, when nature, on the eve of preparing for approaching night, permits useful juice to fall and rest on every plant, with the view of reviving its leaves, its fruits, or its lingering blossoms ere the return of morn, when every night insect rises on buzzing wings from the ground, and the firefly admits thousands of other species, appears as if purposely to guide their motions through the somber atmosphere, when numerous reptiles and quadrupeds commence their nocturnal prowlings, and the fair moon, empress of the night, rises peacefully on the distant horizon shooting her silvery rays over the heavens and the earth, moving slowly and majestically along. It is at this moment, kind reader, that your ear would suddenly be struck by the discordant screams of the barbed owl. Its wow, 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 wow is uttered loudly, and in so strange and ludicrous a manner that I should not be surprised were you to compare these sounds to the affected bursts of laughter which you may have heard from some of the fashionable members of our own species. The Ruby-Throated Hummingbird Where is the person who, on seeing this lovely little creature moving on humming winglets through the air, suspended as if by magic in it, flitting from one flower to the other, with motions as graceful as they were light and airy, pursuing its course over extensive continent, and yielding new delights wherever it is seen. Where is the person, I ask of you, kind reader, who, on observing this glittering fragment of the rainbow, would not pause, admire, and instantly turn his mind with reverence to the almighty Creator? the wonders of whose hand we have at every step discover, and of whose sublime conceptions we everywhere observe the manifestations in his admirable system of creation. There breathes not such a person. So kindly have we all been blessed with that intuitive and noble feeling, admiration. 